you remember last week, I said, I asked the big question, who's in charge? Was it the parents? Was it the kids? It clearly wasn't the government. And now we have to ask the same question again. Do you remember when I said that if Kwasi Kwarteng says there's no cause for immediate concern, guess what, folks? Of sure enough, if you believe the opposite of what these ministers say, you'll be closer to the truth because there's cause for immediate concern. It turns out that we're not sure who's in charge. Is it a Muppet called Kermit? Is it Putin? Is it the lorry drivers? Or is it the press scare tactics? I want your thoughts. Who do you think is in charge of this country? It's clearly not the Prime Minister. It's clearly not the government. So give me your thoughts, your views. We've got some amazing guests. We have, of course, got my Sunday sermon. And yes, I'm going to be talking about that this energy crisis, these huge energy bills that we're all going to suffer, this was totally predictable, totally self-inflicted and an utter disgrace. My special guest today is the former Conservative Cabinet Minister, former Tory leadership contender in 2019, Esther McVeigh. It'll be great to hear what she's got to say. I've also got a Labour peer, yes, Lord Andrew Adonis, on to talk about the Labour Party, their shenanigans, their conference, what's going on, what's his thoughts. And we'll be talking about the new Scottish drugs policy that's just appeared from nowhere. We'll be talking to a Liberal Democrat MP. So we're going across the whole political spectrum here this morning. We've got a great professor, Carol Sikora, talking about capacity or not in the NHS as we head towards winter. So much more. But give me your thoughts. Call me 0344 499 1000. Text me talk at 8722. Tweet Act Talk Radio. I look forward to reading your tweets out. I want to hear from you. And don't forget, you can watch us live, all the action, me and the guests on Talk Radio TV. Don't forget to download the app or on Apple TV, Samsung, YouTube, and a raft of other TV stations. You're listening to Tice Talk. Don't go away. It's the one and only, the only home of common sense. It's Talk Radio. Across the UK, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker, this is Talk Radio. Well, thanks for joining me here on Ty's Talk this Sunday morning. And I think it really is time for what's, what I feel is a pretty passionate Sunday sermon from me, because it is quite extraordinary what is going on. Literally, as we speak, millions of people are receiving letters from their energy companies, their utility companies, with huge price rises. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pounds as we head towards winter. And it's only September. It's not even cold yet, folks. So listen in. I just want you, for a moment, just take a step back. Just close your eyes. And let's imagine a nation that until about a decade ago was a big net exporter of gas. Imagine a nation that has decades and decades worth of accessible oil, of accessible gas, off its coastline, in the waters around the islands of this nation, but that that nation decides not to use it. Imagine a nation that has over 50 years worth of cheap, accessible shale gas, literally under our feet, possibly under your feet, if you're listening or watching from the middle of England. But you decide this nation's leaders, in their infinite wisdom, decides not to use that gas, not to access it, because it's a little bit scared of the eco-zealots and the eco-bullets who get upset, the eco-bullies. Seriously? Imagine a nation whose leaders say that instead of using our own cheap, easily accessible gas, no, 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 we won't do that, folks. We're going to pay and send lots of money overseas to import expensive gas, from a raft of nations, including from rogue states like Russia, in other words, from Vladimir, and therefore we're completely at his whim if he wants to reduce the supply and increase the price. Imagine a nation, folks, that is subsidising one company, £800 million a year, to chop down acres and acres and thousands of acres of woodland in North America, more woodland than the than the UK produces every year itself, in order to chop that wood down, to, to turn it into wood pellets, to ship it across the Atlantic Ocean, in order to burn it in a power station here. Oh, and by the way, in order to fix the numbers, 
they don't count the CO2 of the wood that's burned, and they don't count the CO2 from the shipping fuel that's used to ship all these wood pellets across the Atlantic Ocean. Just imagine that. Does that sound sensible to you? I want you to call me. Imagine a nation that decides, now we don't need to have any form of storage of our own gas, you know, in case there's a bit of a hiccup, in case there's a problem. Do we need to have a contingency storage supply of our own gas on our own shelves? No, 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 don't worry about that. We'll close our own facilities down. We'll outsource that storage. We'll pay money to another country to outsource that contingency storage. And I'm sure the good folk of Netherlands, you know, they'll send the gas over to us when we call for it, except, of course, when they've got a shortage. And what do you think they're going to do then? Do you think they're really going to send the gas over? Because what we saw, for example, from the PPE crisis is that when things go wrong, when the chips are down, they often go wrong across the world for everybody at the same time. Not very smart. We literally have about five or six days worth of gas storage. Other European nations have 10 to 20 times as much storage in their own country we've decided actually we should outsource it. Imagine a nation that lets its own world-leading nuclear industry wither on the vine. Instead, we thought it was a good idea that we'd be quite happy paying our neighbours, the French, to supply us electricity through what turns out to be a bit of a dodgy, unreliable connector that breaks just at the time when we need it most. Great. Imagine a nation that thinks it's a good idea when we've got to belatedly build some more nuclear power stations, that thinks it's a good idea to use billions of pounds of finance from none other than the Chinese communist regime. Yes, I'm serious, folks. Chinese, the Chinese state is funding in a significant way the building of a nuclear power station down at Hinkley Point. And then Imagine a nation whose leaders then say to those same Chinese uh, state-owned entity, I tell you what, folks, um, once you've done that, what about designing, building, manufacturing and operating another nuclear power station quite close to the nation's capital? That sounds a good idea, isn't it? To let what is essentially a bullying rogue state right into the heart of our own shores. Imagine a nation that thinks it's a good idea to pay 10 billion pounds a year in subsidies to the wind and solar power renewable companies, most of whom are overseas owned investors, overseas private equity groups. That's a cost to every family of almost 200 pounds per household per year. And not content with paying them those 10 billion of subsidies, imagine a nation that thinks then actually we might need to pay another 2 billion pounds to those same people in order sometimes to turn the wind turbines off in case the wind is blowing at the wrong time, at the wrong speed, in the wrong place, and we haven't quite got the cables to deal with it. I mean, seriously? And imagine a nation who's led by a prime minister that wants to get rid of perfectly good gas boilers and replace them with expensive, unreliable, noisy, large heat pumps that won't heat our water or our rooms to anything like the same temperature and will cost everybody a lot more and which will therefore inevitably lead to your parents and your grandparents literally freezing in their own homes. Imagine a nation whose Prime Minister says it's easy going green, it's lucrative going green. What planet is that Prime Minister living on? He was of course talking about it's lucrative for some of the big business, the overseas private equity group that own these, uh, these wind turbines. But it's not lucrative for the tens of millions of British families who are receiving huge energy bill increases, literally as I speak. Now, I've got some bad news, folks, because this is not a dream. This is not some far-fetched storyline in a James Bond movie with a ridiculous Blofeld-like villain. I'm afraid to say that this is actually a real nightmare. And I'm also afraid to say that the nation in question is our beloved United Kingdom of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. We have the most expensive 
electricity in Europe, our gas is four times more expensive than in the United States of America, even though it could be at a very similar price if we used our own gas. And most of this nightmare, most of this expensive energy is totally down to the leadership, the incompetence, the weak, short-sighted decisions taken mainly by Tory politicians and, in my view, incompetent civil servants over the last decade. They have failed to properly plan for contingencies. And of course, far too many of those civil servants, where are they? Well, they're working from home. This Conservative government, just, just remember, just over three years ago, in their 2017 manifesto, they promised us that we could create thousands of jobs with a new shale gas industry, literally under our feet. Cheap energy for all. And then, of course, they bottled it at the first sign of a few eco-bullies. Really and truly, we are a great nation of lions, in my view, led by donkeys. We can do so much better. We deserve so much better. Here endeth the sermon. Call me. Do you agree that we are badly led? Or do you think we're well led? Or maybe you're not quite sure. Call me. 0344 499 1000. Tweet me at Talk Radio. I want to hear your thoughts, your views. You've got my view here on Tyson.